Hiya, and welcome back to Promises to Keep. The game that teaches us that... Theo is the real comfort character. No, because I'll take away your mod ship. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Trying to keep it, keep it all calm. Oh, the fucking cat. Oh, oh, now you reveal yourself. Now you reveal yourself, right as I'm starting. I can hear some kind of music playing from Hunter's room. Sounds like Rofi already made himself comfortable. Finally, what took you guys so long? Rofi. We were like 15 seconds behind you. Oh, what are you doing, you little shit? And I could have finished all the food in that time. He sticks his tongue out playfully, but Hunter looks at me fully serious. I believe him. We're up against a serious speed eater, Leo. Our dining halls didn't stand a chance against this guy. Man, you mad because I always had stuff going on during the day. Yeah, with your six classes and 17 different jobs on campus, what the actual fuck? Rofi, are you okay? You want out? You want out? No, no. That's a bad amethyst. Bad amethyst. No. You want out. What were you doing? You can't have any fun to paint it in here. Oh. <laughs> Rofi, do you do you need some therapy, baby? Not 17, I'd like two. He stops and thinks for a second. And a volunteer for this then, or two at the hospital. And that research position you really hated. Oh, oh, you're right. At least I enjoyed my jobs. What kind of research? And jobs. Oh, nothing special, just the medical nonsense. But I was completely out of my depth the whole time I've worked in that lab. I was surrounded by crazy smart doctors and graduate students that just made me feel stupid. Oh, that really doesn't sound like fun. It wasn't, but I needed the experience to throw on my resume. And I guess it all worked out in the end. He used to come by my apartment and complain about his research mentors all the time. You think they're torturing him in the lab or something? Well, they kind of were. I just didn't speak up against them because I needed a recommendation letter. Hunter reaches for a dumpling and pops it into his mouth. And I taught on campus. The tutoring job I had was actually how I met this guy. He playfully thumps Hunter on the back after the raccoon finishes his bite. I pop a dumpling into my mouth and immediately pick up another two. Rofi and Artemis really outdid themselves with these. Crispy on the outside and savory on the inside with hints of spice and sweetness from the complex sauce. Anyway, I was mostly tutoring for two and an extra half. My parents helped me for the, from a first year or two, but I ended up needing the job to make it work financially. His voice takes on a slightly wistful tone. But I really did meet some of my closest friends through those opportunities. And I made good money, too. And I got to spend time with a cute puppy dog once a week. The tutors we have now don't measure up to him in the slightest. Hey, they're not that bad. Yeah, but you're good at everything, so I could just go to you and help with all my questions. Now we gotta figure out who's better what topics and get help from a million different tutors. It's also annoying. Rofi rolls his eyes. God forbid the student has to put an effort to succeed academically. Hey, I was just trying to give you a compliment. Rofi giggles. I know. He leans in towards me. He texts me with the question, by the way. He just can't get enough of me. Hunter overhears that and playfully tackles him onto the floor. Their combined laughter fills the room, and I can't help but laugh with them. Mustard eyes. Oh, no. I almost forgot how strong the sense of camaraderie, camaraderie was between college friends. I had managed to retain very many of my own, truthfully. Rofi and Hunter untangle themselves a moment later. Hunter sits back up and grabs another dumpling, but Rofi stays laying down. Yeah, anyway, do I have any idea what's going on tonight? Any events on the agenda? I'm actually not sure. I feel like event programming is Theo's department. wonder if he's home yet. I'll throw him a text in the group chat. Rofi whips out his phone and pauses for a second, paws poised over the screen. He'll Theo when he gets home anyway. Rofi starts typing while Hunter polishes off his meal. Well, that does it for me. But you have like four dumplings total. Is that enough for you? Yeah, I had a protein shake earlier, and those keep me decently full. 
Without looking up from his phone, Roki chimes in. Hello, my fellow sleuths. I am Balboshidu, a Yoshi half Balbus or detective. Yes, I was maestro before the reason I changed my name again. Embarrassed smiley face, embarrassed smiley face, embarrassed smiley face. Is because I have this idea of this OC for a while. So I will try it for now. Uh, hiya. Uh, what do you want us to call you now? Yes, Maestro had a glow up. Brophy got them beautiful blue eyes. Just get lost in them. Without looking up from his phone, Brophy chimes in. I keep telling him that he'd be eating closer to his maintenance calorie level, but he doesn't listen. Hunter smirks. And I keep telling you that you should come to the gym with me. I do. You did. Like, twice. Brophy whines and finally puts his phone down. When you know that I'm always tired from work and just want to lay in bed get home. Hunter very clearly bites back a scathing retort. Well, maybe we could all go sometime after the storm is over. Fine, I'll go with you guys. Sweet. All of our phones buzz. Looks like Theo responded. Just got back and eating now. No plans, but maybe Barnite? Brophy's face lights up. Barnite? To the barn nearby that's open. No, I... No, I think he means the basement. Oh, right. I remember having a glimpse of it earlier today. Brophy texts back excitedly, and pretty quickly, a time is agreed upon for the impromptu event tonight. How exciting! I don't drink very much, but I'm thoroughly... Theo knows the stuff, right? He can make me something yummy. Yeah, I'm sure he does. And anyway, you have me. I know my way around alcohol. Hunter turns to me. Yo, Rofi here is scared of parties, so whenever I pull up to one, I drink a little extra in his name. That's not good for you. I'm just trying to include you somehow, and I know you like it when I send you texts of all the drinks I'm having. Until I have to come rescue you because you got too drunk. Okay, that only happened once. At least twice from what I remember. Anyway, most drinks are usually too calorie heavy for me, so I only drink on occasion. Tipsy Hunter is so fun to be around, though. Remember that one time we tried to make things drink at my play? Yeah, and half of what we made was horrible. I'm not trying to relive that night in Tempson. As they talk, I don't feel the need to say much. I'm content just listening to them relive old college memories. Being a witness to the conversation almost makes me feel like I was there with them. Having a good time. I think in another universe, the three of us would have made a great trio. Anyway, the three of us should go out for drinks sometime when I'm not cutting calories, that is. Oh, I guess I forgot that we could just start hanging out as a trio now. All I have to do is put myself out there. That's fun! Well, judging from Theo's text, we still have some time to kill. Any ideas? Just bulldo- bulboshi? Okay. Everyone thinks quietly for a moment. Then Hunter speaks up. Y'all ever been to a casino? Both Rofi and I shake our heads. I might not look it, but I love me a little gambling. He gets up and produces a pack of playing cards from his desk drawer, handing them to Rofi. Mad shuffling these for me? Sir! As Rofi shuffles the deck, Hunter produces a small silver case from his backpack. With a flourish, he opens it and pours a stack of poker chips onto the rug. Fancy gamer to a poker? Rofi gazes starry-eyed at the chips. How do you play? Well, there are a lot of variants, but the one I play most often is Hold'em. Leo, do you want a rules refresher too? Sure, I'll listen in or nah, I know how to play. How stupid do we want to be? Yay, gambling. Yeah, let's let him yap. So basically, each round, we all get a hand of two cards that we keep a secret. There will also be some communal cards in the middle that we can all use. They'll start face down, and I'll flip them face up over the course of the game. Certain combination of cards are better than the others, and whoever has the highest value combination wins the round, as long as they haven't folded. If you think you're going to lose the round because you have a bad hand, you can fold and let the rest of the players duke it out. This means you're out for the round and can't win any money, even if your hand ended up being worth the most in the end. However, this does mean that you can serve the rest of your money for the round, because you aren't forced to keep betting. We take turns betting until everyone calls or agrees on a proper amount. Then as a dealer, I'll flip over another communal card and we'll bet again, with the, no with the new knowledge of what that card is. 
Keep in mind that you can also bluff, meaning you can place big bets with an e even with a bad hand to scare your competition into folding. Basically trick them into thinking you have a great hand when you don't. Alright, I think I got it. You guys can correct me if I do something wrong. We're gonna die. Alright, I'm gonna call you Bulboshi. Come on, let's start. His eagerness to jump in so quickly sort of surprised me. He was the more cautious, patient one of us when we were young. Always trotting carefully on new ground. Now, of course, I'm going ahead and modifying a few of the betting rules so that I can play and beat, be the dealer at the same time. It's not really traditional for the dealer to play, but this is all fun anyway. And with that, the first round starts. After the initial bets and antes, our first cards are dealt. My first hand is a two of hearts and a seven of spades. Looks like it's already a bust for me. Seems fitting giving my re giving my recent luck. I look up for my cards and take note of my competition. Hunter seems pretty focused on his cards, and Rofi is already done thinking, it seems. Yeah? Alright, I'm ready. Do I bet now? Go ahead. Hunter and I both watch Rofi push a considerable stack of chips into the center of our makeshift poker circle. Wait. You sure? I'm third. I figure it can't hurt to watch his... To match his bet, despite my bad hand. Hoping that no one calls my bluff. Call. Alright, I'm actually out on this round. Hunter discards his hand. Clearly not pleased with his luck so far. Round continues between Rofi and I. And after Hunter reveals the flop, Rofi and I pushes the rest of his... Ch Rofi pushes the rest of his chips in. <laughs> oh, fuck. Rofi, you're gonna... You're gonna die. Rofi, it's literally the first round. Well, like you said, it's all fun, right? And who says I don't have an amazing hand? Uh, to avoid immediately eliminating one of us, I decide to fold, letting Rofi take the pot. The next round follows a similar pattern, with Rofi making an enormous bet and the rest of us eventually folding. He gives a mischievous smile as he takes the pot. Again. Alright, Leo, we can't let him do that again. And we don't. Another round begins, and this time both Hunter and I match Rofi's initial bet. After the community cards are revealed, Hunter speaks up. Alright, I have a triple nines, Leo. I have a full house, three queens, two nines. Both look at Rofi. The smile on his face reveals it all. He lays his cards out for us to see. Ten and jack of spades, which slot in perfectly with the community. Nine, queen, and king of spades. Straight fluff, anyone? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Hunter lets out an incredulous huff at Rofi's luck. Okay, that's ridiculous. The second best hand in the game on your third ever round of poker. Mm -hmm, I guess I have some serious beginner's luck. With a teasing Rofi, takes the pot for the third time, leaving Hunter and I with barely enough any money to play. After that, the game ends fairly quickly, our bankroll's unable to keep up with Rofi's. With all the chips in front of him, Rofi springs up off the floor. Well, looks like I have a backup career in case I ever quit my job. Hunter, still reeling from being thoroughly trounced by a poker player, gets up by a new poker player, gets up too. Okay, well, usually people don't get that lucky. Poker is a complex game, and there are a lot of things that... Rofi rolls his eyes and bats at Hunter playfully. Right, right, I can't hear it with the sound of all the cash I won! Before Hunter can come up with some witty comeback, another text in the group chat sets off all of our phones. Oh, looks like Theo is ready for us to come down in the basement. Ready to go, y'all? Super ready! He swipes his phone off the floor and helps me up before bending down to collect all the playing cards and chips. Oh, I got a door. Let's not keep him waiting down there. Rofi then drops what he's doing and stands back up, grinning. Don't need to tell me twice! He skips out of the room energetically. Hunter turns to me, clearly exasperated. I still don't think he realizes how lucky he was with that hand. Well, he is a pretty reliable mathematician. I'm sure he probably calculated all of that. Calculation is even half of the game, though. You can calculate all you like and still lose every round. He doesn't seem to understand that. And I mean, straight flush? I don't think I've ever had that hand in years of playing. I smile and shrug. He always had crazy good luck with games when we were kids. I honestly can't say I'm, I'm surprised he won. We'll just have to rematch him later. Hunter sighs and shakes his head. It's time to drink his water. Smile returning. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. 
It's time to drink water. I'm holding a knife. I'm gonna put it down. I want to cut something that I don't want to cut. Hunter sighs and shakes his head. His easy smile returning. Anyway, let's hurry down. I'm sure they've already started the festivities. No, oh, don't worry about it. Right behind you. Sure enough, by the time we reach the basement, everyone else has already gathered there. I've only seen a fraction of it earlier, so now I take my time to fully examine the space. It's a little chilly, but spacious and comfortable. My eyes are immediately drawn to the pool table by the stairs, complete with a sufficiently fancy lamp. Next, they focus on an old-fashioned jukebox, glimmering gently in one corner of the room. And finally, a stately-looking movie projector and screen. Uh, we're gonna... Um... Soft lighting illuminates the dark wooden bar and its matching shelves, packed with fancy-looking bottles, glasses, mixing equipment, the works. So Theo's a Nepo baby. Mixology is a bit of a hobby of mine, so I like to keep this place well-stocked. Theo punches a code into the jukebox, then sets up shop behind the bar, smiling broadly at us. Rofi immediately cozies up to the bar, eyes scanning the display with wonder. I can make pretty much whatever you'd like, uh, as long as I've got the ingredients. So, any takers? Rofi's paw shoots up in the air as if we were in class. Me! Me! I figured. Well, what do you have? What do you have? I don't know, you pick something. You pick something sweet, please. Theo blinks in surprise and laughs. Okay, then how about an apple teeny? I don't know what that is, but sir! It's a martini, but it's got a sweeter apple flavor. I've never had a martini either, but I'm down to try. Okay, fair enough. Do you prefer gin or vodka? Rofi blinks back at him for a long moment. How about I just pick for you? Yes, please! How about the rest of you? Nothing for me, thank you. I'll just have water. Theo nods encouragingly. Sure thing. Hmm. Hunter's bright eyes flick back and forth between Theo and the array of bottles. Yeah, all right, I have a little something as a trade. There's no pressure, of course, if you'd rather not. Now I'm down to see a count of calories. Give me a shot of vodka, please. Hey, all right, a true college man. Theo T's is starting to tinker behind the bar. Nolly, anything for you? Um, I'd have a mojito if that's okay. If you have any readings, I mean, if not, then... Theo cuts him off gently, looking over his shoulder with a smile. No trouble at all. Nice and easy to make. Ollie nods in gratitude and maneuvers himself onto a bar stool, gracefully draping his tail over the back. And last, but certainly not least, Theo's eyes meet mine and he grins playfully. What's your poison, Leo? <sighs> Godspeed. Wait, have I had Godspeed? No, no, I haven't. No, I'm, I'm thinking of... Okay, we got vodka, gin, rum, tequila, beer, wine, and nothing. So basically, blackout. Uh, oh my god, Yoth. Come here, you little man. Uh, blackout. Why would you drink this? Uh, fancy pants or sadness? You know what? 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 I'm, I'm going to create a poll. I'm going to create a poll. You just vote for the one that makes you happy. Just vote for the happy one. I'm going to make a poll. Uh... Okay, so, uh... So, blackout.
Alrighty, alrighty. Go ahead and vote. I have a system in place. Beer falls under the blackout car category. Don't worry, I have a system. I have a system. Beer is actually under multiple categories. I don't know, I've never had gin. Never had it. And we're getting blackout drunk. Okay, so vodka, tequila, or beer. If you want to get really blackout drunk, mix the vodka and tequila. Wipe the whole fucking hard drive. I guess we're drinking beer. Why would you drink beer, though? If you don't mind, I think I'll just have a beer. Of course, a leopard of culture, I see. Why? 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 I I get why some people drink beer. I just I just don't like it. I just don't like beer. Because in my experience, it tastes like dog piss. It tastes like piss and sadness in my experience. It's not pleasant. Every bad drink put in one in the wise words of Clyde, it's so acidic. Uh, of course, a leopard of culture, I see. He grins broadly at me and starts rummaging below the bar. I'm afraid we've got nothing on tap at the moment. Because it's just my basement and not a real bar. But I've got some bottles and cans laying around. I've got a- I've got lager, that's what I was drinking last night. Probably what I'll have tonight, too. And I've got some light beer for when I'm feeling health conscious. Which, admittedly, is not very often. Run an IPA if you'd prefer something hoppier. Any of that sound appealing? Join Theo and have a locker, have a light beer, or have an IPA. Not all beer tastes like piss. I mean, to each their own. You know what? I'll join you. Give me a lager. My pleasure. He sets two bottles on the counter and pops each one open with an oddly shaped bottle opener. Can I see that opener? Hmm. Oh, this? He flushes slightly. Another of my aunt's old things. He hesitates slightly before passing it across the bar to me. The handle is in the shape of a fox with its tail curled in a circle to form the mouth of the opener. Rofi cranes his neck to sneak a peek as well. Oh, so cute! Look at the paws! One by one, the whole group crowds around me to get a better look. I indulge them, holding it up to the light. Yo, you have so many nice things! All he says candidly, a noticeable, a noticeable blush starting to settle in his cheeks. Agreed. Theo mumbles some thanks in return, clearly trying to contain his massive smile. He holds out a paw for the opener, and I gently place it back into his palm. For a long moment, our paws and eyes meet. My fingers trace almost unconsciously across his paw pad. The bumps and ridges of his leathery palm, that sweet transition into soft white fur. The spark that jumps between us when our eyes lock. And then the moment is over, and the two of us try to find something else, if anything else, to look at. <clears throat> uh, would you like a glass? I, um, sure. He pours the foamy lager into a sparkling glass and passes it across the bar to me. I clutch the drink and bring it up to hide my flushed face. It's really to have something to do with my paws. Theo tends to everyone's requests quickly, and soon after, everyone settles in with their drinks. The light chatter around me is pleasant. I can't remember the last time I was surrounded by such friendly faces. You know I would go gray with this drink. Rofi looks playfully and pointedly at Hunter, the alcohol clearly starting to settle in. Thumb dumplings! Hunter, how about you go get the room upstairs? Oh, why me? Because my legs are broken and I can't get up! <laughs> God damn! And 
Ender though he's busy. Hey, I spent long hours out in the cold shoveling the sidewalks. Don't I get any points for that? With a dramatic sigh, I get to my paws. All right, Rofi, I'll go collect your leftovers for you. Oh, I mean, I was, I was just giving on a hard time, but that's yeah, fine. I want one too. <laughs> You're the best, Leo. I smile at him and head upstairs. As I enter the kitchen and grab the foil pan of dumplings, I can hear the clinking of glasses from the basement. I slip one into my mouth, enjoying the savory taste, the juicy pop of flavor, and the sweet sound of muffled laughter. How long has it been since I felt like this? Like I belonged in space, like I could just stand here forever in easy bliss. It almost feels too good, too easy, too good to be true. Just as I did yesterday morning, I walk over to the window and place upon the frozen glass. It chills me to the bone. For a fleeting moment, I remember snowbound forest and the embrace of an icy lake. If this is all a winter dream, here's where I would wake up. At this moment, when joy is so near, here's where the other shoe would drop. I'm going to wake up right now. But I don't. The feelings of warmth and comfort remain. The sound of laughter flows on. Your friends are waiting for you, Leo. Go to them. I grab the dumpling pan and hurry downstairs. I arrive during a lull in conversation. Everyone's spread out around the basement. It seems like they've pretty much forgotten about the dumplings. I gently set the pan down on a table and let my gaze wander around the room. Our gracious host, Theo, is still serving drinks behind the bar. He keeps a diligent but tender eye on his guests. Artemis, cool, calm, and collected, he thumbs through a box of records, one talon resting easily on the top of the soft-glowing jukebox. Ollie, soft-spoken yet passionate, his eyes are bright with wonder as he fiddles with the old movie projector. My old friend Rofi curled up on the couch, a blissful smile on his youthful face. Hunter, sprightly and happy-go-lucky, his dexterous paws are busy setting up the pool table, tongue sticking out in concentration. As I watch them, the joy I feel almost startles me. I think I could feel this strongly after only two days. Emboldened by this feeling, my eye keeps returning to one of them in particular, the one I want to spend the rest of the night with. Oh shit, is this the, uh, is this the fucking, uh, route selection? Ah, shit, ah, shit, let me, let me save. Yes, I want to fucking save. Yes, I want to overwrite my save. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make a poll. I'm gonna make a poll. New poll. I already know Cass is going to make an omelet. You know what, you know what? I'm gonna use uh, the funny name. Uh, comfort character. Go for Theo first. Save Artemis for last. Emo burb. Nerd. Bestie. Boyfriend. Okay. It's Jover. It's so Jover. See, I already know who's going to win. If it helps, uh, the choices are in the same order as what's on screen. I, I already know who's going to win. I already know who's going to win. Because I know cats. I think. Kind of, not really. But I think I know how he works. And I think I already know who's going to win. So I'm just going to go ahead and update the stream. I'm going to go ahead and update the stream. And there it is. I walk up to the bar and plop my elbows down on the surface. I'm going to make sure I already made a save I did. Theo smiles easily at me as he cleans a glass. 
Hey, hey you. He leans back against the shelf behind him, silver fur, silver fur glimmering in the basement lights. You need something? No, just enjoying the company. Likewise. Sure to rate us five stars, okay? I scoff, resisting the urge to roll my eyes. Suddenly the old jukebox in the corner crackles to life as Artemis tinkers with it. An old song I know from somewhere but can't quite place. Soft and comforting. Artemis shoots me a grin and continues fiddling with the controls. This is quite fitting for tonight. Theo closes his eyes and starts to gently hum along with the melody. I settle in on I settle into one of the bar stools, pleasantly tipsy and enormously comfortable. I purr loudly, no no fuck. I purr loudly, no longer caring who hears me. The words of the song suddenly spring unbidden into my head. Living in a kind of daydream. I'm happy as a king. And foolish though it may seem to me, that's everything. Sing along with me, huh? My eyes slowly open to meet his. Sweet, soft, and brown, the color of warm, rich chocolate. Yeah. Does it bother you? Never. As the shimmering notes fade into the air, Theo grabs two bottles from the shelf. I think I'll have one more drink. Do you care to join me? Yes, please. As he goes about preparing the drinks, I watch him work. Watch his gentle paws handle the bottles and glasses. Watch his, buff watch his fluffy brow furrow in concentration as he pours. Watch his snout curl into a smile as he slides me my drink. There you are. Enjoy. His paw lingers on the glass as if waiting for me to take it from him. Emboldened by the moment, I let my, prop I let my paw brush his once more. Soft and solid. Warm and inviting. Eventually, Theo slips his paw away. He places one elbow on the bar and leans on it. An easy blush settles on his face, only, vis only lightly visible through his shock of white fur. So? He asks gently, what do you think? My heart quickens involuntarily. Of what? Of the space? He gestures around, grinning, sli grinning slightly. Oh! It's lovely, really cozy and comfortable. Glad to hear it. He nods, satisfied. That was my main goal. Comfort first. Comfort first. In everything he does. Thank you, Leo. For what? For coming to sit with an ancient old man like me. He winks. I wave a paw dismissively, trying to hide my red face. Theo, I know we've been joking around, but you're not actually old. I feel like it, though. I feel absolutely archaic. He takes a swig of beer, eyeing me over the bottle. You all have been helping, though. Making me feel useful. He sighs and scratches the back of his furry neck, fluff rippling over his broad shoulders. Weather like this, shut inside, nothing to do normally, would drive me crazy. Just another reason I should thank you, I guess. Ah! So cute! He smiles at me again with those tired eyes, and my stomach surges, lightning shooting through my body. You're welcome, Theo. In the moment, I don't know what else to say. If I open my mouth again, I'm worried I might just blurt out the truth. I think I'm falling for you. I think I'm falling hard. I spend the evening with Theo at the bar, sometimes talking to the others but always thinking of him, always sneaking further glances. He keeps serving drinks, long after the wariness starts to show on his face. Part of me wants him to go get some sleep, but the other half doesn't want him to leave just yet, doesn't want the night with him to end. Finally, to my relief from its slight disappointment, he lets out a massive yawn and slides out from behind the bar. Last call, folks. I'm afraid your bartender is exhausted. Artemis stands and stretches. No worries. We should probably call it a night. He looks a little pointedly at the gently swaying Ollie, who giggles and nods. Yeah, you're probably right, Artie. Hunter collects the already sleeping Rofi from the couch and half carries him upstairs. A trail behind with Theo, not wanting to leave just yet. He catches me lingering by the bar and sets down his rag. You want something else before I close up, Leo? Um, no, I just... I was wondering if you needed help cleaning up. You're too sweet. No, I cleaned over the course of the evening, so there's only one or two things left to wash. Sounds like I told you, you're a guest here, so you don't have to feel obligated to help. A bit of sternness creeps into his voice, and he blocks the entrance to the bar with his body. But... Just let me help you. I struggle to gather my words, not wanting to give too much away. I don't feel obligated to help. I just want to. You feel the same way about us, right? You didn't take us in because you felt like you had to. You did it because you genuinely wanted to. And in return, I want to help you. So let me in. Let me in, Theo. I'll draft the work, however little there is. I'll carry half the burden, however much there is. 
A mix of emotion flashed across Theo's face, and for an instant, I see his brown eyes turn watery. You really are too sweet. Come on in, then. Help me finish up. We cleaned together, working shoulder to shoulder, elbows brushing against one another. Touching lightly, suspended in sweet tension. I grow bolder, lingering by his side, reaching across and stretching our brief moments of contact. He doesn't stop me. But that's all he does. By my best efforts to stall eventually, the last glass is washed and the night is over. You look exhausted too, Leo. Let's get you to bed. Yeah, it really caught up with me. He leads me upstairs, accompanying me to the den. I feel my heart beat faster with each step forward. We pause in the doorway and look at each other, too nervous for words. He shuffles his feet. I stuff my paws in my pockets. He scratches the back of his neck. And finally, Leo. My breath catches hard, my entire being tight with tension. Sleep well, okay? He says awkwardly, not meeting my eyes, and turns to leave. Wait. I almost reach out to grab his arm, but in the end I let him go. The door swings shut behind him. I slowly let out the breath I'd been holding and will my body to relax. Easy there, Leo. No need to rush things. My heartbeat begins to slow once more. My fevered mind begins to clear. There will always be tomorrow. As I start my nightly routine, I replay the thousand special moments of, this, of the evening. A warm blossoming in my chest. Singing along with me, huh? As I lay down to sleep, the words of the old song flit once more to, through my mind. It's just the thought of you. The very thought of you. My love. Do we want to do anyone else tonight? <laughs> well, you all just said that I'm gonna curl into a ball and cry. <laughs> My heart is broken. It's so Jover. Yeah. Let's do them all tonight. Let me fix it. No, cuz we're going to we're going to finish this game tonight. My heart is so broken right now. I for I forgot to make the Theo save. I forgot to make the Theo save. Okay, who next? Artemis, Ollie, Rofi, or Hunter. Yeah, let's do Ollie. As I walk up to the old projector, Ollie turns to meet me halfway. Leo! Did you see this? Let me be emotional! <laughs> Let me be fucking emotional! Just kidding, I still love you. Leo, did you see this? He shuffles over to me, half-empty glass clinking. I always wanted one of these growing up. It makes the basement feel like a real movie theater. Oh, sorry in advance, by the way. I'm a little drunk. No kidding. Hey, no worries. That was the idea, right? Ollie giggles. Speaking of, where's yours? We should get you a drink. Sure, why not? With a flick of his crested head, Ollie downs the rest of his drink, loops his arm around mine, and drags me to the bar. Theo! Another round! Theo eyes the two of us as we approach, setting down his own drink. Another round, huh? He looks at me shyly and winks. 
I've got just a thing for you. In fact, I'll make it a double. Wow, really? You're the best, Theo. Theo sets down a cool glass of... <laughs> Theo sets a tall, cool glass of water down in front of Ollie with a soft thump. The, dinos, the dino looks at it uncomprehendingly for a moment. Pay the booze tax first, and I'll make you another. Oh. Ollie breaks into another fit of giggles. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. Now I was just confused why I didn't look like the last drink you gave me. What about you, Leo? You look like you're holding up well. Yeah, I'll take another. Thanks, Theo. Oh, oh, by the way, Leo. Ollie grabs my arm and sets down his half-empty glass. Wow, he really can put it away no matter what it is. Um, I wanted to say thanks for earlier today, you know, for letting me talk at you so much. Of course. I didn't mind at all. Oh, right. Artemis told me there was some commotion with the power while I was out. Yeah. Ollie starts spinning his phone between his claws, eyes wandering. People panicked a little. That's all. Not you, though. You were perfectly calm. Ollie blushes and buries the sound in his glass. Ollie was the one who figured out the problem. It was no big deal, really. But none of us thought of it, only you. I nudge him with the paw, trying to keep trying to get him to meet my gaze. He finally looks up, a jolt of electricity jumps between us. His eyes were they always so blue? So soft and delicate behind those glasses. You can take the compliment, Ollie. My voice is almost a whisper, stifled by the moment's weight. You deserve it. Okay, if you say so. Thanks, Leo. Um... That instant, Theo shifts slightly against the bar, and the resulting creak reminds us of his continued presence. Anyway, uh, Theo, where did you get the, uh, the projector? Ollie once again busies himself with his drink. The clear glass does nothing to hide his blush. Theo's eyes dart between the two of us, a slight smile spreading across his grinned muzzle. Oh, that old thing just a gift from a friend. I'm a bit of a tinkerer and I like old machines, so... Ollie nods in agreement, but I'm not sure how much he's listening. He shifts in his chair and, and his eyes catch with and his eyes shift with him, catching my gaze and dropping it again, searching around the room before returning to me. You know what? Theo sets his, down his glass and looks knowingly at me. I'm feeling a bit peckish. Think I might go have one or two of those dumplings you so kindly brought down. You two have fun. He winks at me before striding off purposefully to the opposite corner of the room. He is a good guy. Yeah, he really is. Can I be annoying real quick? Uh, sure. I'm sorry for being so weird about the compliment earlier. I guess I just... Ollie begins to clack his claws on the bar in tight circular rhythms. I guess I just feel so lucky. More lucky than I deserve. He sighs and leans back slightly in his stool, looking up at the ceiling. And it sort of makes it hard for me to accept compliments. But I guess, I don't know, I guess maybe we do deserve to be happy sometimes. Ah! Cuteness! Cuteness! I look over at him and find those beautiful blue eyes already fixed on me. Sorry if I'm getting too personal here, but I'm drunk. And I get real. What's the word? Thinky. When I'm drunk. Why do I so bad want to try to give him an Invader Zim voice? And I... Uh, I mean, obviously, thinky isn't a word, but... Introspective? Yeah, yeah! Introspective. I guess booze just... Slows down my brain a little. Stops from spinning in circles so I can actually think of myself and about the world. How wild and unlikely it is that we exist as creatures. That our atoms and molecules align in the specific and functional ways they do. And that in a universe full of empty nothingness, we find ourselves on the same planet. In the same basement. Drinking together. I mean, when you think about it. When you really think about it. Life is incredible. Incredible. Really, truly incredible. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Take a long moment to really consider his question. Yeah, I think I do. Ollie smiles his big toothed smile. I think you do too.
I meant to yesterday when I said you're easy to talk to. I chuckle softly, not expecting a compliment. If you say so. No, I mean it. <laughs> because when I talk to you, I get the sense that you actually listen. I feel like so many people go about their daily lives never hearing a thing outside their own thoughts. And so they never have a thought that they don't believe. And I guess on a more personal level, I feel like most people take one look at me or listen to me stutter and then completely write me off. Like, like if I can't immediately get the words out, I must, I must not have anything worthwhile to say. But you... You're patient with me. You give me time to gather my thoughts without interrupting, without walking away. And it's not just me, either. You treat the others that way, too. It's obvious. So, um, I don't know. Ollie fizzles. Fizzles! Ollie fiddles with his claws, brow furrowing. Sorry, got a little deep in the weeds there and kind of forgot my point. But I guess what I really want to say is, even though we just met the other day, I think you're a good person. I don't know, it doesn't really matter what I think, and I'm not some arbiter of virtue or whatever, but... He looks up at me again, sincerity plain in his eyes. I'm just glad I met you, that's all. Like, really glad. He turns bright red again and stuffs his hands in his hoodie pocket. If I, if that's okay. Yeah. I clear my throat a little choked up. Yeah, it's okay. It's more than okay. Really glad I met you too, Ollie. At that moment, Theo's voice rings out across the basement. Last call, folks. I'm afraid your bartender is exhausted. Ollie giggles and fiddles with his glass. First time I've ever sat at a bar till closing. His claws tap against a crystalline surface, releasing clear, bright noise, bright notes into the air. He looks up at me and proudly proclaims, If this is... Wait, what? If this isn't nice, I don't know what is. I was wondering when we were going to get one of those. Artemis suddenly appears behind us, placing his empty water glass down on the bar. That's one of Ollie's favorite things to say. Especially when he's drunk. I always mean it, though. The bird gives us both the once-over, as if making some sort of calculation. Well, I hate to disrupt your night, but I can't really go to bed until you leave, so... Oh, oh, right. Sorry, I already I forgot this was your bedroom. Ollie laughs and slides off his stool, swaying slightly. No worries. You gonna be okay heading upstairs? Ollie blows a raspberry at him. Duh! Artemis looks at me. I'll walk him up. Thank you. I think that's what he wanted anyway. Artemis! Ollie turns bright red again. Go on, you two. I'll leave you alone. He strides off purposefully with one last smirk. This doesn't have to be it's awkward It's time now. to drink water. No. It's time to drink yes, water. Yes, it doesn't. His signature always it's time to drink water. a new tinge of shyness. Hopeful it's shyness time to drink water. Anxious one. Um, sure. Please walk me to my room. My pleasure. I let Ollie lead the way up the stairs. He does just fine, clearly not that affected by the booze. We stop in front of his room door and he turns back to me, twiddling his claws, and he turns back to face me, twiddling his claws nervously. I, um, thank you, Leo. I had a wonderful time talking with you tonight. Is it okay if I text you tomorrow morning and maybe we can hang out more? I'd, I'd like to spend more time with you. He clasps his claws t together tightly, anxious eyes fixed on me. Of course, Ollie. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? When was the last time I actually looked forward to tomorrow? Good, Good night. Good night, Leo. Good night, Ollie. As I make my way downstairs and start my nightly routine, I think back to what Ollie said at the bar. Maybe we do deserve to be happy sometimes. I switch off the lights and bundle the blankets around me. I mean, when you think about it, when you really think about it, life is incredible. Maybe he's right. Let me make the Ollie save. And next route, where we're just going to do all these tonight. Uh, uh. Give me a stretch. The choices are emo bird, bestie, 
boyfriend. Go with Rofi. Yeah, let's go with Rofi. We gotta talk to the bestie. Spotting that familiar orange dog, I make my way to the couch against the wall of the basement. He's clearly tipsy, maybe a bit more, but he seems to be enjoying himself, glass and paw as he sways with the music coming from the jukebox. No words are needed as I sit next to him. Almost instantly, he sways in my direction, clearly rest carefully resting his head on my shoulder. Hey, Leo. Hey, Rofi, how are we feeling? Good. He giggles a little. Warm. He nuzzles his head against my shoulder a little. Instinct takes over and I find myself stroking his head right between his ears. He leans in and starts rubbing his snout against my cheek. Ugh. Rofi doesn't say much else, but I continue to earn happy dog noises as I rub his head. We sit there together for a while, watching Theo and Ollie chat at the bar, listening to Artemis listening as Artemis tinkers with the jukebox. I feel Hunter's eyes on us for a moment, but as I meet them, they're full of nothing but warmth. He gives me a thumbs up and a wink before returning to his billiards game. Everything about this moment just feels right. I'm where, I'm where I belong, with everyone. With Rofi. I'm not sure how much time passes as we sit together. For once, I don't feel the need to keep track. At some point, Rofi sits, sets down his mostly empty glass on the table next to us. When he settles back onto the couch, he leans against me fully, head on my chest, back against my belly. He pulls his arms around me, but shoots his puppy dog eyes at me before I say anything. Keep me warm, Leo! I don't, pull it, I don't put up much of a fight. We watch Ollie make his way back to the bar for another drink, giggling as Theo says. Giggling at something Theo says. Theo's been at it for a while now. I wonder if he's calling it a night. Hopefully never. I don't think anyone can get me to move from this spot. Right on cue, we hear Theo call out to us. Last well, call, folks. I'm afraid your bartender is exhausted. There it is. Do anything else, Rofi? The dog shakes his head slowly before letting out a yawn. I want to snuggle you. You already are. Then I'm good. That was cute. That was so fucking cute. Hunter grabs one last shot at the bar before coming over to join us. Looks like you got yourself in a real mess, Leo. He points at the sleepy dog, basically, laying on top of me and chuckles. I don't mind, and I doubt he does either. Rofi's eyes fully shut then, and almost instantly, I feel his breathing slow. Slow down as he drifts off. He's definitely a good cuddler. For a second, the magic of the moment wavers. Have you two? Oh, as buds, yeah. Hunter looks up thoughtfully. But to answer the inevitable follow-up question, we were never really more than that. Let out the breath I was holding. <sighs> he would kill me for telling you this, but talked about you a lot when you first met and after too. I don't think he ever stopped talking about you, honestly. And judging by your reaction, he must have been on your mind a lot too these past years. I nod slowly. Hunter gives me a smile. Seems like the storm came at just the right time then. He gets up and stretches. By the way, the real mess starts now. He gestures at the sleeping dog on top of me. Good luck getting him off of you and on to bed. With another chuckle, he heads off to pack up the billiards table. He was right, I didn't have the heart to wake Rofi up just yet, but Theo seem, really seems to be winding down. I'll let Rofi have a few more minutes of rest before, before gently shaking him awake. Huh? What's happening? Theo is cleaning up for the night, and I think Artemis is getting ready for bed. Rofi sits up. Uh, oh, right, I forgot Artie is sleeping down here. Let's go upstairs. Sounds good to me. I help Rofi up and he leans on me a bit, groaning. My head already hurts. Drink more water. Artemis calls from the other side of the basement. Rofi whines. I will. Later. Enjoy your headache, then. After checking in with Theo and wishing everyone good night, Rofi and I are the first to leave the bar. Want me to walk you upstairs? No, I'm okay. He lets out a big yawn. But, but can I just sleep in your room tonight? My room is so far away! And I'm about to pass out! I fall victim to his eyes and don't have it in me to turn him down. As long as you're happy with an air mattress. As long as you're there. I open the door to the den, ushering the dog in and closing it behind us. Rofi flops happily onto the mattress. But as I stand over the comfortable looking dog, everything begins catching up to me. The nervousness and the anxiety... The old feelings, everything felt so natural tonight, but what if... And at that moment, I'm literally pulled out of my doubts by Rofi, his paws tugging my arms towards him. I let myself fall next to him on the mattress. I feel my, I feel the stress melt away. Rofi buries the snout into my chest. We don't say anything for a while, just enjoying each other's warmth and company. 
An eternity passes before Rofi mumbles drowsily into my fur. I'm so, so, so happy I found you again. His speech slows down with each word as he fights against impeding sleep. I missed you, Leo. I missed you too, Rofi. Our words linger in the air as we're both overcome by exhaustion. For the first time in a very long time, there's no place I'd rather be than right where I am. Rofi save. Okay, boyfriend or emo bird? I'm I'm just waiting for the for the ad to start because it's going to start any minute now. Girl, we already did. Actually, I do need to recreate the Theo save. I'm going to do that while the ad plays. All right. Oh, there it is. Let's do Hunter. A clack of billiard balls echoes throughout the basement, drawing my attention to a certain raccoon at work. He spies me from across the room and beckons me over. As I make my way to him, he downs the contents of his shot glass and then sets it aside. Leo, want in? I mean, I've only played once or twice, but sure. No worries, I can teach ya. He hands me a cue as he sets up the balls in their triangle formation. I try to get a feel for the cue's weight on my paws, but before I know it, he holds out the cue ball for me. Now let you break first. I hesitate for a bit. He does too. And for a split second, we find our paws against each other around the ball. He laughs uh, He laughs and slips it into my palm. Trying to cop a feel, huh? You're a sly one, Leo. Whatever you say, pal. I quickly turn to the pool table to hide my burning face, place the cue ball down, and take aim. Then I completely whiff. Without looking up, I try to take another shot at the cue ball. It connects this time, but only barely. The cue ball doesn't break... So much as tap the triangular formation, and only a few balls roll outward. I wince and look to Hunter, braced for some of his patented playful ribbing. Despite my worries, I met with a patient smile. He moves to reset the table, then picks up the cue ball. Want a few pointers? I nod, backing up and letting him demonstrate. Oh shit, this is cute! So, first thing you want to do is establish a firm bridge with one paw. He sets one paw down and lifts his index finger. Then you position the stick on your paw. I like to keep it under my index finger and let it slide the stick as I make my shot. He leans over the table and takes a few practice shots without making contact with the cue ball. And you just go for it! Strike confidently and try to follow through with your stroke in a straight line. With a resounding clack, he makes his shot. The cue ball speeds across the table and breaks the rack of balls cleanly, sending them all over the table. He stands back up. You got all that? Uh, I think so, but I might need help setting up a bridge and figuring out the follow through. No problem, which ball are you going for? I point to the solid orange ball that's set up nicely in front of a corner pocket. Good choice, just set your paw down and lean over, I'll help ya. I do as he says, placing my paw on the table and leaning over a little, just like he demonstrated earlier. Looks good, can I come over there? Yeah, feel free. And just like that, I feel him against my back. As he hovers over me, his scent surrounds me comfortably, a mix of fruits that I can't quite pick out. My heartbeat quickens as he reaches for my bridge paw and shifts it slightly. Our fingers almost interlace as he helps adjust the position of my cue. Then he maneuvers his other paw onto the cue. He moves it down until it touches mine, and then wraps it around my paw. I hear him speak softer than I have before. Let's try a few practice shots now. Let him guide my cue as he grips my paw gently. We take one, two, three practice shots before I feel a snout against my neck. You're doing great, Leo. Oh? Uh? 
and gives me a soft chuckle, amused by my flustered reaction. That had to be on purpose, right? Then I feel his warmth leave me, his paw no longer holding mine as he stands up again. Almost wish he stayed close to me like that for a, norm for a little longer. But the moment has passed now, his voice returns to normal. That said, that looks great. Does it feel better? Giving me a smile, he sits down next to the table. Oh, yeah, it feels more stable like this. He can definitely see me blushing now. I don't really care, though. Honestly, it feels kind of nice to have Hunter's full attention on me. I share this game with him. Pleasantly buzzed like he is, I presume. I take a deep breath and take my shot, watching as the cue ball makes contact with my target, but exhaling as I miss the pocket by hair. Ugh, close. Angles are a hard thing to get down, but I'd argue that straight shots are even harder. He hops up from his seat, cue in hand, as he observes the state of the game. The concentration is visible on his face as he traces the possible trajectories of the ball, of the balls with his paw. Can't help but stare at... Stare, I can't help but stare a little as his dis, at his display of focus. Something about the way he commits himself to things fills me with awe. He looks up from the table and our eyes meet. He grins at me, then bends over the table to make his move. Surprisingly, he misses the pocket, but he shrugs it off and backs away from the table, giving me space to work. I try to copy him, identifying the balls that are easiest to pocket. As I analyze the game, I feel his gaze on me. I feel his curiosity as he waits for me to take my shot, his enthusiasm as we share this moment together. His willingness to teach me pool, despite being a tease all the while, and his eagerness to lend a helping pawn not just to me but to Theo, Rofi, and everyone else the last two days. To have someone as patient, supportive, and, and dedicated as Hunter by your side? I don't think you could get any luckier. The game continues, and unsurprisingly, Hunter comes out on top. Hey, not bad at all, Leo. You had a good string of pockets towards the end. I guess so. You were much better, though. Well, it comes with time and experience. We can come back and play more often if you'd like. I love that, Hunter. Before I can ask if he wants to play another round, I hear Theo call out from behind us. Last call, folks. I'm afraid your bartender is exhausted. Sounds like that's our signal to start cleaning up. Here, I can take your cue. He re-racks our cues and their holders up against the wall. Then we cover the pool table together with its tarp. I see Artemis helping a very sleepy-looking Rofi up the stairs, while Ollie and Theo are still chatting at the bar. Ready to head up? I nod. We say our good nights to everyone and walk up the stairs together. Hunter insists on seeing me off at the den, despite it being right around the corner. As we split off for the night, Hunter opens his arms for me. I accept his offer, giving him a warm hug, letting him bathe me in his scent once again. You smell nice. What fruit is it? He grins as he embraces me. Aren't cats supposed to have good senses of smell? Hey, I was just curious. And I was trying to keep him here a bit longer. It, I kid, it's peaches today. Today? Yeah, I try to change up my cologne every now and then. Even if someone doesn't have a good nose to appreciate it. I squeeze him a bit tighter in protest, my snout buried against his neck for now. Mumble out a response. I'll pay more attention now that I know. He chuckles, rubbing his paws against my back. Then I keep changing it for you. I look up at him, my snout leaving his fur for just a second. Just for me. Just for you. I smile and nuzzle his neck a bit more. We stand there together for a long moment, just enjoying each other's presence. I don't want to go to bed. Before I can fully finish my sentence, I let out a big yawn. Careful, you gotta spread that to me! He gives me one more firm squeeze before letting go. I had a lot of fun tonight, Leo. I did too. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'm already counting down the hours. With one last goofy smile, he heads up the stairs to his room. I stand in the doorway for a few long moments, taking in what remains of the raccoon's cologne around me. Though the den is a little cool, I don't mind much. Still feeling Hunter's scent and warmth around me. It's like he never left. I can't wait for what tomorrow brings. Time for Emo Burb. Artemis leans easily against the jukebox, phone in hand. His wings flutter slightly behind him at regular intervals, as if dancing to some silent beat. The neon light of the jukebox caresses his face, highlighting his soft, feathery hair and the gentle curve of his beak. He looks so elegant, so collected, so... handsome. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little tipsy. And maybe I don't really care. I muster my courage and walk over to join him, trying to look as natural as possible. Hey! Yo. Trying to pick some music? The bird looks up from the jukebox and nods. It's not a party without music. Is this really a party? There's only six of us here. Sure, why not? He flicks through this list of songs, his face holding into a gen his face folding into a gentle smirk. This thing's mostly got oldies, though. Theo is not beating the grandpa allegations. I swear, he's the most elderly 30-something I've ever met. Not a fan, huh? 
Nah, I like old shit. I'm just not sure it's the vibe tonight. Well, let me see the song list. I scooch up next to him and start flipping through the tracks. I can feel his eyes on me as I work, sharp, almost piercing beneath his delicate lashes. I suddenly became very aware of how close we are and resist the urge to step away. Just be normal, Leo. I know a few of these. This one's pretty good. Artemis squints at the title and then looks back at me teasingly. You know that's a love song, right? Like a really serious one. Um, shit, haven't thought of that. Why do I suck so bad at being normal? He looks around the room with a smirk. Listen, I know we're all buds here, but... His eyes flip back to me. Unless... His smirk widens. You trying to put the moves on somebody? I, uh, what I, well... Great, great response, real smooth. Noticing my expression, his, his countenance softens and his eyebrows raise. Wait, actually though? I was mostly kidding, but... Are you? I'm thinking about it. Oh, yeah. Then fuck it! Let's put some love songs on. Wingman Artemis, reporting for duty. Oh, baby, if, if only you knew. Before I can say anything, he punches a set of keys and the machine starts warbling. The scratchy sound of an old trumpet and piano fill the basement. Ooh, good choice. Theo calls out from over the... Theo calls from over at the bar. This one's an old favorite of mine. That doesn't surprise me at all, Theo. Hey, you're the one who queued it up. Fair enough. Artemis turns back to me and lowers his voice. So, who's the lucky guy? I open my mouth to speak, but he beats me to it, his face lighting up in realization. Wait, actually, don't tell me. I think I know. He narrows his eyes and scrutinizes me, his face alight with easy mirth. Suddenly, I'm finding it very hard to breathe, let alone speak. The piano melody strolls mockingly around us as we stare at one another. I think I knew from the start, to be honest. You're pretty obvious. The muted trumpet spikes and shrills, and my heart tries to hammer its way out of my chest. You could've just told me straight up, you know. I... I swallow the lump in my throat. I didn't know how you'd react, and... I didn't want to make you uncomfortable or anything. Why would it make me uncomfortable? He speaks softly, reassuringly, gracing me with a slight lopsided smile. You worry too much. The music rises to a shimmering climax, and a brilliant elation flows through me with, with each labored heartbeat. You should tell him how you feel. I have a hunch Roche. Rofi feels the same way about you. Ow! What? Realization dawns on me and I burst into a hearty fit of laughter. Oh. The bird blushes slightly, adjusting his beanie with an embarrassed talon. Or, not then. Sorry, guessed wrong. I shake my head, still absorbed in giggles. Well, since I'm clearly oblivious, who is it? Yeah, no shit. Silly bird. Buoyed by the thrill of laughter, the words pour out of me with ease. It's you, Artemis. The pure shock on the bird's face makes me laugh even harder. Sorry, sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I just... Okay, maybe I am laughing at you a little bit. So, though... Uh, no, yeah, no, it's okay. He scratches the back of his neck sheepishly. I just... Really didn't expect that. In a good way, or... Not in a bad way, I just... You really caught me off guard here. He finally meets my eyes again, a slight blush showing on his cheeks. Sorry for being such a dumbass. It's fine. Now it's my turn to give him a smirk. It suits you. He scoffs, his old sarcastic persona returning. Well, it caught your attention, so I guess you're right. He leans back against the wall, stretching his wings out and crossing his arms. So what's the plan? I'm still waiting for you to put the moves on me. My anxiety ebbs, completely replaced by exhilaration. Well, at first I figured I'd get so nervous that I could barely speak. Artemis nods sagely. A good opener. And then I'd act real, really cagey so you'd think I was talking about someone else. Okay, I'm with you so far. And finally, when you didn't understand, I'd laugh at you and call you a dumbass. Gives me a short but pointed golf clap. Perfect. An A-plus seduction. Thank you. I stuff my paws into my pockets and look up at him expectantly. So? He regards me with his usual sardonic smile. But this time I can see a new warmth in his eyes. Luckily for you, you were direct. Honestly, I'm dumb as shit sometimes. If someone's flirting with me, I need them to spell it out. So the opposite of what I did at first. You got there. That's what matters. Picked a good song, too. A classic. In fact... He turns to the jukebox and starts flipping through the track list again. Let me return the favor. Music always speaks louder than words anyways. Once more, I slide up to the jukebox with Artemis, and for beautiful eternity, we take turns queuing up songs. The old speakers crackle and hiss, enveloping us in a hazy jazz and deep, soulful vocals. And together we float, twin islands in the waves, lightly touching, sometimes speaking, sharing these glimmering moments as the wind, ho as wind howls tunelessly outside. 
We move words, we play music, sharing our flights of emotion through the whir and spin of vinyl. First playful, then deep. Elation gives way to sorrow, gives way to sorrow, gives way to deep, desperate devotion, teased into the air by the loving scratch of the needle. A needle going round and round like the hands on the clock, singing sweet eternal songs of love until even eternity ends. The muted tender jazz coupled with the warmth of the drink starts to take its toll. I fight back several yawns, my, eye, my heavy eyelids fluttering. I saw that. Bedtime. No, I can stay up. As if on cue, Theo walks out from behind the bar and announces, Last call, folks. I'm afraid your bartender is exhausted. Bedtime. Artemis repeats gently. To my sleepy dismay, the others start heading upstairs as Theo finishes the final cleanup. Come on. He reaches out and smooths a bit of fur out of my face. I'll walk you up. I nod reluctantly and start to shuffle towards the stairs. When we reach the den, I turn back to Artemis. I had a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, it was my kind of party. I wanted it to go on forever. I say sheepishly, shuffling my paws. You'll see me tomorrow. I'm not going anywhere. Tomorrow. When was the last time I was actually looking forward to tomorrow? Promise. Promise. Good night, Leo. Good night, Artemis. And with those few words, he slips out of the room like a shadow, silently shutting the door behind him. I think... I think I can trust you. You're not a dream. When I open my eyes in the morning, you'll still be there. After all, you promised. And... That is promises to keep. My dudes. We already know what time it is. Let me grab everything that I need in order to do this so that way my computer doesn't fucking die. Okay, grab, got the adapter. HDMI capture card with the card attached. Alrighty. You know what time it is. So let me just... Stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow. And it depends.